We've talked about functions and we've talked about for loops, so now let's talk about loops within functions. And this is a form of nesting. We've talked about nesting before, but that was in the form of function calls. And for example, if we wanted to convert user input in the form of a string to an integer, we would write something like age is equal to a call to the int function and the argument of that is a call to the input function where we use a prompt of enter age and when we hit return we see that prompt so the innermost function is called first let's say 19 for the age then that int function got whatever input returned and its return value was assigned to age so the variable age is now the integer value 19 now we want to make sure we know how to nest one programming construct that has a header and a body in another programming construct that also has a header and a body. So both for loops and functions have headers and bodies. So how do we do this nesting? How do we put one within the other? And it's really pretty simple and perhaps even obvious, but let's go ahead and illustrate things with an example. Let's write a function that returns a list that contains grades that the user is entered and all the grades should be floats. Here's one approach to implementing this. We could define a function that we'll call get underscore grades and it doesn't take any arguments. The first statement in the body of the function will be to assign to the identifier grades an empty list and this is where we'll place the user input. Now let's prompt the user for the number of grades so we'll store that in the identifier num underscore grades there should be a integer number of grades and we'll use the input function to obtain the desired number of grades and we'll prompt the user with enter number of grades and once we have that let's use a for loop so we'll say for i in range num underscore grades we'll have a counted loop where we will execute the loop num underscore grades times and we will use this loop variable to construct a prompt notice when we hit return that idle has indented things not just once to get us to the body of the function but twice to get us to the body of the for loop so when we have a programming construct that requires indentation for its body and that's nested within another programming construct that requires indentation to indicate its body then we have to indent twice so now within the body of this for loop let's construct our prompt so let's say a prompt is equal to the string enter grade space plus the string version of the loop variable i plus one and then that's concatenated with a colon in a space and then what we'll do is we will take this grades list we will append to it the float version of whatever input returns when it's given that prompt we are calling the append method on the grades list and we pass to it the float value that is obtained from the user when they respond to the prompt now when we hit return we're still indented at the same level as the body of the for loop but let's complete the for loop and say when we're done with the for loop we want to return that grades list and it's important that this is not indented at the same level as the for loops body because when we get to this return statement we will be done with this function and we have to let the entire for loop do its stuff and then we return so the return should not be in the body of the for loop now hitting return once and twice we get the interactive prompt back now let's see if this works properly let's assign to an identifier grades whatever the get grades function returns so hitting return we have enter number of grades let's go with four grades and enter grade number one how about 90 grade 2 let's go with 80 grade 3 maybe 83 and grade 4 97 now what's contained in grades those four grades as floats 
we could display the average grade with something like this. We could say print the string average grade is equal to, and then we could sum the values in that list and divide by the length of that list. And then we see the average grade is 87.5. Later we'll introduce other programming constructs that have headers and bodies, such as while loops and conditional statements. And for all of these things, the header is indented to the appropriate level at which it appears. So if it's part of the body of a function, then that header is just indented over as far as every other statement in the body of that function. But then for the body of that for loop or while loop or conditional statement, you have to indent statements further. And once that body is done, you go back to the original indentation level. And that's it insofar as what you need to remember for nesting these programming constructs.